as you probably know by now, I'm David Zokaitis. Been here a few times before. I'm interested in civil rights, not just from an altruistic perspective, but because my rights have been trampled here in Sioux Falls. Last fall, just to refresh your memory, I was um, cleaning some branches off a public sidewalk when four cops, not just two, but four cops, showed up to give me a, a hard time, shall we say. Now, it turns out that according to Terry versus Ohio, you have to have some level of suspicion to detain somebody. <clears throat> These four officers had none. I was able to verify that at the time. So that's a violation of civil rights right there, and that is a crime. Also during this encounter, one of the gentleman officers commanded me to sit on the ground. Good way to keep somebody humble and subservient, but illegal if you don't have any reason to detain them in the first place. I think the worst part of that encounter, though, was when one, one of the cops tried to grab my arm. I think he was hoping that I would do something like that so that the four of them could beat the crap out of me. Anyway, um, promoting fear of imminent bodily harm is called assault, and that's a crime, if you can get anybody to care about it. Now, when I was here last time, I talked about institutionalized racism in New York City and during apartheid in South Africa. Actually, we should call that government-sponsored racism. Not just institutionalized, but government-sponsored racism in those two environments. And if you were a black man, a victim of that, then chances are the government would not be very receptive for any complaints that you might have regarding bad treatment by the police. Well, I'm not a black man. Obviously, obviously not. And this is obviously not apartheid in South Africa. So one might hope that the government here would be more responsive to any complaints regarding bad police practices. So let's, let's see what I did, and let's see what has happened so far. One thing I did is I wrote a letter to the chief of police, and I got a return receipt. I figured that way I would know that he actually got my letter. I told him I was illegally detained. And for some odd reason, I haven't gotten a response back. Just can't figure out why. At the mayor's neighborhood summit, I met a captain there who was all about respect and um, trust between police and citizens. I wrote to him and told him that police lied to me on two separate occasions. I haven't gotten a response back from him either. It's starting to look like a pattern. Now there's a new man on the police force who's in charge of internal affairs. It's his job to investigate complaints. I sent this man email along with a few other people. It's been a few months by now. Haven't gotten a response. Now this is all looking very bad for anybody who might believe in civil rights. What it looks like is that the government in Sioux Falls or South Dakota or the USA condones civil rights violations if they are committed by police. That's what happened. That's what I see. But uh, you know what's important here is that we keep going to try to figure out why all this occurs. I have some idea of why individual police officers might look for an excuse to be mean to people. And one reason that they would find such an excuse is because they'll get away with it. You know, we've got charges of assault already, not battery, just assault, deprivation of liberty, disorderly conduct. Oh, and let's add that <coughs> obstruction of justice. My complaints have been ignored. That's obstruction of justice. So anyway, but if you have problems like that and the police say fine, well, why? So we got to figure that out, and I'll keep coming back, and eventually we'll get to the bottom of this, we'll figure out why bad stuff happens, and then maybe we'll find some solutions. Hey, but uh, I'm done, so see you next time.